Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Aiga and welcome to my channel Heart Notes where I talk about all things perfume. Today I have a perfume haul for you guys. There's nine perfumes in total that I got pretty much all in the month of April. So let's just start because it's probably gonna be a long video. So the first one that I have is one by Jennifer Lopez. Now this comes in a pretty pair with another perfume called Promise. They're kind of a set and I, as far as I understand, Promise smells very similar to Juicy Couture. So they're super different because this one completely doesn't. A lot of people on Fragrantica say that this smells like Santal 33. I haven't smelled that perfume, but I know it's super popular. And this one smells quite masculine. So um, yeah, it smells quite masculine. And my husband really hates this perfume. But uh, let's look at the accords and notes for this one. The main accords are woody, powdery, floral, leather, and mossy. In the top notes, we have freesia, pink pepper, peach blossom. In the middle notes, clearwood, cedar, and jasmine. And in the base notes, sandalwood, swede, and oak moss. Okay, so this perfume really is very woody, mossy, earthy, kind of unisex. Maybe there is a little bit of those flowers with the freesia, but generally... Mm, it reminds me a lot of pickle juice, I'm gonna be honest. And so does um, so does it remind to my husband as well, just a bit of pickle juice, which isn't probably the best option for a perfume. Oh, by the way, I have tried these out. I've worn two or three times each perfume and uh, they're all very affordable. Yeah, now on the paper and on the first spray, it just smells like straight up men's cologne. Very woodsy, very masculine. I do like my masculine perfumes, but there's just something in the dry down that that's kind of a bit sour, just smells a bit off, and I don't know what, what, what it, which note exactly that is, but something's just off there in the dry down. The initial spray is quite nice, but I know I'm not gonna like it on the dry down most likely. At least not as much, but hey, you know, if you're into your masculine perfumes, like I am, you might just enjoy this. This is a very misleading bottle, isn't it? It's like light pink, airy, looks very feminine, but uh, this is a masculine perfume inside. Kind of reminds me like Billie Eilish did the pair of her perfumes. The first one being vanilla, super sweet, super feminine. And the second one, as far as I know, is quite masculine as well. But I would like to try those too. But yeah, this pair with one and promise reminds me of uh, Billie Eilish uh, perfume pair. So that's that. The next one, I have another one from Jennifer Lopez. This time it's Live, or Live. Live, probably. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of the bottle. It, yeah, it kind of looks like a magic potion, I guess. But, I mean, the colors... Mm, yeah, I, I don't know. Something's just off. Plus, it has so many colors, I don't know on which shelf should I put it uh, on my perfume shelf. Big issue, isn't it? Okay, so this is a very fresh smelling, sort of everyday summer springtime perfume. So let's look at the accords and notes for this one as well. The main accords are sweet, fruity, fresh, citrus, caramel, tropical, floral, vanilla, powdery, and woody. In the top notes, we have pineapple, Sicilian lemon, Italian orange. In the middle notes, red currant, blossom, a peony, a violet, base notes of caramel, sandalwood, tonka bean, and vanilla. You know, looking at the notes, I love all of them. I love all the fruit notes. I love all of those um, flower notes. I love all the base notes. Putting it all together, it's very generic, to be honest. It's very generic. Uh, spring, summertime, shower gel, fresh out of the shower, starting your day. In terms of an age group, I don't think I see one. Maybe maybe younger, younger women, but I think anyone can wear this. Yeah, I don't see anything special in this perfume. I would say she's she has better ones to check out. Like even the previous one, um, one called one, <laughs> even that is better. At least it's something interesting, something unusual, because this is just run-of-the-mill celebrity perfume. Yeah, citrusy, light, spring-summer perfume. That's pretty much it. Right, the next one that we have, I have two Britneys. So the first one is um, Britney's Fantasy, the 
Britney's Fantasy, the Intimate Edition. So the nice um, white bottle, I believe she issued this alongside with a lingerie line or something like that. So this is the bottle that we have, a nice white bottle with light, light pink rosé, almost uh, crystals on it. The name matches the perfume. It's kind of creamy, silent, not offensive. I quite like this, but I know that the longevity wasn't the best one for this perfume. Actually, for pretty much all of the perfumes that I'm gonna be hauling today, the longevity isn't like the best. <laughs> they None of them are strong, so keep that in mind. But I did like wearing this perfume. It was a little bit more interesting than wearing the fresh fruity ones. So yeah, okay, so let's look at the accords and notes. The main accords are vanilla, sweet, musky, powdery, ozonic, citrus, fresh, fruity, white floral, and amber. In the top notes, we have lychee, Italian lemon, violet leaf. In the middle notes, brown sugar, ozonic notes, Janet, jasmine, uh, lily of the valley. And then the base notes, vanilla, white musk, heliotrope, and benzoin. So it is very kind of creamy, dreamy, intimate is a good name for it. Sweet sort of gentle soft perfume you do get the lemon in the initial opening in the initial spray but i don't really see the point why why do they need the lemon in an opening for a perfume that's going to be super sweet and kind of cozy there is that lemon yeah but um as it dries down it just goes to that uh, creamy soft vanilla the white flowers the sugar it's um yeah it's a nice perfume. I wouldn't say that this is my favorite from the Britney's line, but it's definitely, definitely not the worst. I think it's a nice one if you're chilling at home, you're watching a movie maybe. The weather is not too hot. Um, it's a nice perfume. It's too bad it doesn't really project. It's more of a skin scent. That's why I said you're chilling at home because you won't fill up a room. Obviously, it doesn't project much and the longevity isn't the best, but I think it's still a nice one to have in your collection. So yeah, that's uh, Britney's Fantasy Intimate Edition. Next up, we have the Ego from Prerogative Line uh, from Britney. So I have the original Prerogative, which is a kind of sharp coffee scent. And this one is a lot different. So for this one, the bottle is white and pink. Um, the scent is completely different as well. And it really reminds me of something. It reminds me of Beyonce's, um, this is a wild orchid. No, orchid heat, wild orchid heat. <laughs> what is this called? I think it's called wild orchid. Yeah, these two are very, very similar. So it's a creamy coconut romantic scent, which I do like, but if you already have this, you won't need this or vice versa. Now let's look at the accords and notes for this perfume. The main accords are woody, warm, spicy, coffee, powdery, amber, fruity, and white floral. And in the notes we have sandalwood, apricot, coffee, amberwood, arum lily, saffron, pink pepper, and goji berries. Now, interestingly enough, for this perfume, a lot, or even maybe all of the notes, they match the original prerogative, which is strange because they smell completely like nothing alike. Um, they couldn't be any more different. I mean, I don't sense really any coffee in this perfume. Whereas, yeah, the coffee, mm, I don't think it's there. Whereas in the original prerogative, the coffee is like the main thing that I smell. Actually, now that I smell this more, it does remind me of the coconut perfume from Beyonce, the Wild Orchid. But this really reminds me also um, Private Show from Britney. Like this is very similar as well. Yeah, so if you like this, you know that uh, sort of creamy, lactonic, soft, gentle kind of reminds you of coffee drink, like a nice coffee drink. If uh, you like that perfume, you most likely will like this one as well. I don't know if you would need both of them though. Maybe save your money and just spend on one. But yeah, they are very similar. Again, I don't see an age group for these perfumes. I think these are all ages appropriate. I think also all season appropriate. 
for spring and summer when it's hot outside maybe it's better to wear it, wear it uh, on evening but generally all year round it's a pretty interesting perfume but since there are some similarities with other celebrity perfumes I wouldn't say it's really that unique I don't know why there's woodsy notes and spicy notes uh, not notes but accords uh, noted down on Fragrantica because I don't get any woodsiness in this this is also marked as a unisex perfume but I would kind of say this leans a lot more feminine yeah this definitely leans feminine uh, to me can a guy wear it? I would find it weird <laughs> but definitely can so yeah that's uh, Ego by Britney Spears next up we have two from Elizabeth Taylor I'm still going for that <laughs> Elizabeth Taylor collection uh, the first one I'm gonna talk about is Brilliant White Diamonds now this is the box and the bottle I like that all of her bottles pretty much come in just the same size the same type of packaging just maybe different colors but they do look very nice and neat next to each other on the shelf all right this is a super citrusy perfume now here on the dry down on the bottle it's just like just straight up lemon but uh let's look at the accords and notes the main accords are white floral tuberose citrus fruity and animalic in the top notes we have tuberose mandarin orange in the middle notes lily honeysuckle and bulgarian rose and in the base notes musk sandalwood and vanilla this is super super citrusy lemony with a bit of kind of a vintage kick i want to say uh, this came out in 2001 so it has been around for a while but at least there's none of these crazy aldehydes that you sometimes get in the older perfumes from elizabeth taylor from the 90s so this is in the new millennia the new century so but i think the citrus in combination with the rose is still giving giving something a little bit vintage now would i gravitate towards this on a hot summer's day if i'm looking for a citrusy scent i don't i don't think i would actually to be honest i think there's some better citrus scents out there but this is by no means outdated and this definitely doesn't smell bad it still smells good it just wouldn't be my top choice maybe in terms of an age group i would say this isn't the youthful citrus scent i would say this is a bit more mature maybe like 25 plus yeah definitely with the woodsiness and the rose this is uh just a bit more serious it's not a juvenile scent it doesn't smell like an air freshener that's good and there's um, not that many notes uh, i mean she used to have a ton of notes in the perfumes from the 90s this doesn't have that as well which I, I believe is a good thing but I don't know if that's the reason or, or what but this doesn't really last that long usually her perfumes are really just killers you know that you can really smell the perfume and it projects for hours this isn't really the case with this one I found that it disappeared quite quickly I would say it's average it's average it's okay it's not good it's not bad if I would pick a citrus I would pick a different one but I mean, I guess it, it's um, worth giving a sniff if you if you see this somewhere. I really like the bottle actually as well. I like the frosted and clear glass combination. So yes, so that's uh, Brilliant White Diamonds by Elizabeth Taylor. Next up, we have another one from her, and this one is White Diamonds Legacy. This is the anniversary limited edition. This came out a while ago but even despite being a limited edition you can still find this in the shops so let's take a look so that's the bottle it's kind of um, just very 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 slightly see-through uh, with the gold lettering it kind of reminds me of some 80s 90s glamour shots i'm going to try to find a picture of uh, what this reminds me of but uh, i really like the bottle design actually for this one now this being called white diamonds legacy i was a bit wary <laughs> that it might smell similar to the original white diamonds which i did used to have in my collection but i decluttered it because it was just a bit too much for me so i was a bit timid uh, about this one that it might be similar to it but it is not yeah this is completely different and in a better way so let's look at the accords and notes 
The main accords are white floral, citrus, powdery, musky, animalic and amber. In the top notes we have honeysuckle, bergamot, pink pepper. In the middle notes gardenia, jasmine and orange blossom. And in the base notes musk, amber and sandalwood. By the way, did you celebrate the king's coronation if you're from the UK? I kind of went a bit overboard with the decorations. I made a cake, I had some snacks. Might have been a bit extra, I guess, but uh, I had fun with it. <clears throat> well, anyways, White Diamond's Legacy. So there's a lot of white florals. <laughs> this sprayer, it's almost like sneezing on you. It's like so aggressive. Ah, okay. So this is also very citrusy and refreshing perfume, similar to Brilliant White Diamonds, but it has a bit of that softness white floral amber musky sort of sweet undertone to it which makes it a bit more glam i guess you could say it's definitely still a spring summertime perfume but if the brilliant white diamonds were definitely for the daytime this can maybe be more suitable for the evening i found that the longevity is better on this one as well the projection isn't as good as her other perfumes, but it's still, it's not, it's not bad at all. I would say this is more appropriate for more mature women as well. Don't find this to be a juvenile scent. Yeah, after the initial sort of citrusy summery vibe, you go into the uh, white florals, which gives it a bit more elegance. Sorry if I still sound out of breath, I'm still pregnant. <laughs> I might sound like I'm about to cry as well, but it's just I'm just out of breath. I, I don't really cry that often, to be fair. Maybe once in two years or something. It's a weird flex, but okay. Anyways, all right, so back to the perfume. So a nice spring summertime scent for maybe a bit older women. And by older, I just mean 25 plus. I don't mean like old or mature, but um, yeah spring summer scent for women quite refreshing quite romantic at the same time i did quite enjoy spraying this at home actually and kind of giving me that couple of grams of elizabeth's uh, glam i guess so yeah that's the white diamonds legacy next up we have nicole scherzinger with her perfume daring now this is a holographic box I do like holographic boxes. I think they can be tacky, but I can be tacky sometimes, so that's okay. Now, a lot of people say that they like this bottle, that it feels heavy and it looks nice, which, um, yeah, I agree. It does feel heavy, but I think this is a, what do you call, a, a sort of stock perfume bottle and a stock cap. This very, This is very similar to Jennifer Lopez's One and Promise caps, isn't it? I think it's almost the same. Yeah, they're very similar, but um, okay, so anyways, this perfume caught me a bit off guard. I didn't expect it to smell the way it does because I, well, she has four perfumes in total. I have now this one and I have only one other one, which was extremely boring. So I didn't expect this to be another one of hers because this is quite spicy and aggressive and warm, but um, Anyways, let's look at the accords and notes. The main accords are sweet, fruity, warm, spicy, white floral, woody, cacao, rum, vanilla, earthy, and patchouli. In the top notes, we have spicy notes, cacao pod, raspberry, lychee, and grapefruit. In the middle notes, rum, jasmine, sandbag, plum, and orange blossom. And in the base notes, vetiver, patchouli, sugarcane, vanilla, and caramel. Right, so there's quite a lot going on in this perfume. With the rum and the spices, it gives it sort of a character. With the cocoa and the caramel, it gives sweetness. It, but I kind of... I don't know if it all goes together that well. Like the opening of grapefruit and spicy notes, it just doesn't make sense to me. Why? So do you want a fresh opening or not? It's a weird opening and I think the patchouli is, is kind of taking it over. The patchouli is really just kind of taking the, the top spot and it's making it smell like earthy almost, a bit like dirt. I think this was the perfume that I tried the least because I wasn't really a big fan of it. I don't really, I'm not a fan of spicy notes, 
But okay, I'll give her that. This definitely stands out in the sort of sea of celebrity perfumes. Um, it's a bit more unique uh, with all those notes. And it kind of reminds me actually of Rihanna's Rebel. Let me smell that actually quickly. Yeah, so it really quite reminds me of Rebel. Except Rebel is sweeter, I believe. It, it also has cocoa and spicy notes and something along those lines. So the notes are quite similar, but this, uh, this one is a lot sweeter. This one just seems kind of cold for some reason. Like it wants to be warm, but it came out cold. Yeah, I don't know if that makes sense to you, but it's kind of a cold perfume wanting to be warm <laughs> to me. But yeah, in terms of weather, definitely cold weather or warm weather evenings. I think this might be a bit too aggressive for everyday wear, but I don't see it as a date night or going out perfume either. In terms of an age group, don't think this is teenager appropriate or that this could be teenager appreciated, <laughs> but um yeah this just smells too earthy for me too too patchouli but if you like your patchouli scents you're not afraid of them you can try this one out I, the packaging is very misleading for this one this sort of light pink um light green to light pink ombre so, yeah so that's that um nicole scherzinger daring moving on i have my first perfume from the Fifth Avenue line from Elizabeth Arden. This one is New York City Lights. Again, very sort of holographic, shiny box. Love that. Very tacky, very tasteless, yes. So the bottle is quite similar to it, matches quite well. Now, I found this in a shop. There were a bunch of these NYC perfumes just aligned and uh, I was just smelling one by one and this caught my attention. I quite like this. Once again, this is a spring summer perfume and let's look at the accords and notes. The main accords are citrus, fruity, woody, amber, powdery, iris, sweet, warm, spicy, patchouli and floral. In the top notes we have lime, cranberry and tangerine, middle notes of oris, amber and osmanthus and base notes of tonka bean, patchouli and sandalwood. Right, so a citrusy spring summer perfume. Groundbreaking, isn't it? But there's a lot of those today, isn't it? But, um, okay, well, Brilliant White Diamonds was one, but I think this one is actually better. Oh, that's very alcoholic. Hold on a second. Right, so I like that the citrusy opening is a lime and a tangerine instead of a citrus, um, instead of a lemon. Uh, I think it makes this better. I also like that there's sort of the woodsiness and the amber in it, which makes it a bit deeper than just a regular citrus scent. A bit of patchouli and the tonka as well gives it a bit more of that oomph sort of. So it's a bit, it feels a bit deeper than, than just the regular sort of air freshener type of perfumes. Now, I would say that I think this is almost a unisex scent. I can quite easily see a man wearing this perfume as well. You can share it with your boyfriend or husband. There isn't really a feminine sweetness in this perfume. At the same time, it's not also very masculine. It's sort of somewhere in the middle. In terms of weather, of course, this is a spring summer perfume. I, would, I think I will reach for this quite a lot actually this uh, summer season. In terms of an age group, I think it suits everybody. I think it suits men, women, young, old, whatever. It is an everyday scent. Uh, I wouldn't say that this is a special occasion or a date night. It's just an everyday quick grab and go sort of perfume, but it's definitely a nice one for that. So yeah, this was a nice discovery for me. I don't see too many people talking about these Fifth Avenue uh, NYC perfumes, and I would like to try more from this line. So if you've tried any other ones that are good, that you enjoy, please let me know in the comments. So yeah, that's that. NYC Lights, Fifth Avenue, Elizabeth Arden. And the last one we have here is Obsession Night by Calvin Klein. Now this is one of the perfumes, again, that you kind of see everywhere in every shop. They usually have this in stock, but I don't see anyone talking about them too much. So, um, 
I was kind of intrigued to pick this up. Obsession Night. You would kind of expect this to be sort of an intoxicating, dark type of perfume, but it really isn't. I was quite surprised by that. Uh, I did read some reviews before I bought it. A lot of people said it's a unisex sort of colony leaning type of perfume, which I don't mind. So I was intrigued and I picked this up and I quite like it actually. Let's look at the accords and notes for this perfume. Many chords are white floral, citrus, amber, woody, vanilla, musky, powdery, balsamic, sweet and aromatic. In the top notes we have white flowers, bitter orange, angelica, bergamot, mandarin orange, middle notes gardenia, jasmine, lily of the valley and rose, and then the base notes cashmere wood, vanilla, sandalwood, tonka bean and amber. So again, another citrusy scent. This is sort of the, the vibe for the... I hate the word vibe. This is the mood, the underlying characteristic of this uh, perfume haul. So yeah, another citrusy scent uh, with white florals in there as well to kind of make it a bit more elegant, I guess. So the opening is citrusy, but it's very, very green as well. Actually, I didn't notice this before, but it's very green, almost like sour mouth wateringly like reminds some sort of sour candy but i think that might just be because of the paper now i don't really get much of the sweetness or the uh, softness of the amber vanilla cashmere i also don't get an old school vibe from the rose this really is just very refreshing green scent now i do remember that this doesn't really project much and it doesn't really last that long but it's a bargain buy for a hundred mil it's I think it was definitely less than 30 pounds the perfume was launched in 2005 so it's been around for a while but I do believe that it's quite popular and I do find it to be a unisex scent definitely a man can wear this but at the same time it's not masculine it really is somewhere in the middle between feminine and masculine and this is just in, in between there. I do quite enjoy it. It's a shame it's not stronger, but uh, I do enjoy the scent. Again, don't really see this on a teenager, but it's definitely not mature either. And of course, spring, summer, so hot weather. So that was the haul for today. A lot of, a lot of citrusy scents. I didn't really intend it to be this way. Somehow it just got it that way. But I would say that the hits are the nyc lights the obsession night i really enjoyed the white diamonds legacy intimate fantasy as well and i think one by jennifer lopez is interesting as well but i'm kind of iffy how much i'm gonna reach for it but i do find it interesting and then the missus is live by jennifer lopez it's just too boring and Daring by Nicole Scherzinger because it's just I'm not a big fan of those spicy notes and it's kind of like a cold spice I I don't like that also brilliant white diamonds kind of it's a miss for me and it just couldn't kind of compete with the other citruses in in this haul maybe if it would be the only citrus perfume in a haul it would be different but there's three more that are better than it so it's a miss and then the prerogative ego, I think is somewhere in the middle as well. I like it, but at the same time, I have the primate show, which is very similar to it. So it's kind of like, mm, you know. So that is the haul. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you stayed until the end. Thank you for that. Then uh, you must be a very patient person, of course. And yeah, let me know about those um, Fifth Avenue NYC perfumes. If, uh, if you're a fan of any of them, I would like to explore that range more as well. And yeah, I'll see you in my next video. Thank you and goodbye.